about groups, metal, guitars, girls, all this stuff. But ultimately, the movie is only half the story because half the true magic is about the fans. The most vocal fans all the time are heavy metal fans. They're the best. I salute them. kids like about metal i don't know i guess they feel they can escape from the real world they can just like be what they want to be be dumb be cool be crazy whatever they can do what they want do you like heavy metal music yeah what do you like about it <laughs> heavy metal was more of an evolution unlike punk rock it uh, evolved from hard rock bands such as led zeppelin the doors uriah heat black sabbath iron butterfly deep purple <laughs> There isn't really a change so much, except for maybe perhaps the technical element, but the energy is still there. The fun is still there. There's just nothing but fist in your face. And I think that's what's the great thing about metal. That's the, it saved rock and roll for the 80s. Well, I think heavy metal is, is the true rock and roll of the 80s. And rock and roll was basically music made by people who were thinking with their crotches. Punk was getting to be techno. Punk was turning into disco in disguise. And it's fast and it's aggressive and it's rebellious and their parents hate it, which has always been the mark of good rock and roll. If your parents don't like it, it's good. What do you think parents think about you? Do I care? The heavy metal bands just picked up on one little thing that we did, you know, I mean, we do that kind of music real well, you know, but this is like this much of what we do, you know, we do a whole bunch of things. I like that spine chilling feeling, that, that goosebumps up the spine, you know, that, like, you really got me, da 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 da, -da. <laughs> it's, like, it's like an orgasm, you know. Sex! And rock and roll, the American way. I know that all the girls in the audience are going to want to know this. 16 but... inches. Okay. No! <laughs> no! Combination all four, we're four, four piece. <laughs> what is a fucking rock star? Some dude that's got more money than I do? I got a bigger dick than all those We just do. fucking, <laughs> hey, you know what? It doesn't mean anything. We just know? like it's the like... party. I mean, it doesn't matter what size your pencil is, it's how you write your name. What's a headbanger? When we first started doing this stuff, ay, ay, ay. When we first started doing this stuff, we didn't really talk about head banging we talked about girl banging or gang banging or anything but head banging that doesn't seem very nice to do Hi. but a head banger they go out in front of the stage and they head bang their head and it's cool i mean that, that's them that's, that's not me i like to stand back and watch and see everything i like to scam on the chicks a head banger is somebody who dies for his music who who is a true rivet head you know a head banger is somebody who likes thrash nothing but who doesn't accept glam, 
in any way. A headbanger is uh, someone that drives by in their car and goes, metal, dude, fucking metal, KNAC. I think we started that. <laughs> Motor headbangers, see? Are you into it? Mm, not really. I'd rather get drunk and kick back and watch them make fools of themselves. That's just a rock and roll reaction. Uh, I think the uh, the actual headbangers of the 80s just make it a little more pronounced. They bleed a lot more. <laughs> I'm just a drummer. I don't bang my head. I beat off, man. <laughs> Attention, everybody! Attention! Attention, you creatures from another planet, you. Hello, suckers. Please be advised. Be advised that you might... Be advised that, uh, that I fucking up. By your entry upon these premises. You are consenting to being photographed and filmed, naked or otherwise. You know, pictures and shit like that. And having your ugly likeness. And sound effects used in motion pictures and home porno and other purposes. You sick, dirty dogs, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And give us your money. <laughs> What we always wanted was to be the biggest, the most outrageous heavy metal band that we could possibly get together. People think it's it's a glamorous life, and you just go from uh, playing a small club, and the next thing you know, you're playing you know the forums of the world. There's a million bands out there, and all these bands are playing the clubs, and they're playing them for a long time. tired of the road every night you know seven nights a week and that's that's our schedule seven nights a week playing it gets it gets to the point where you kind of you go crazy and i think that's why a lot of uh the rockers are kind of senile <laughs> because it happens every day burned out yeah and the biggest. What if it doesn't happen? We know that we, uh, we had a great time trying. <laughs> Joy! Oh! When you look 
in a city like Los Angeles or the whole United States in general, you're going to look and say, man, there's <clears> millions <throat> of bands out there. They look great. They sound great. They're doing their own thing. And all of a sudden, Poison, what's Poison going to do that's going to make us stick out of the crowd? Well, we're going to have to, we had an outrageous look, an outrageous sound. Everything that we did, it was outrageous. And all of a sudden, that people said, wait a second, these guys have a great gimmick, but can they play? Well, they found out you don't sell, like you said, you don't sell three million records if you can't play music. Early on, did you guys ever think, God, we're never going to make it? Before you got signed and everything? <laughs> no, listen, I came, we got off the road, and I got to play some Marina Del right now. These guys are smart. They spent their money wisely. And I'm the little pig that went off with the money, you know what I'm saying? Spend it all loud, abrasive, you know, obnoxious. Well, needless to say, I have no money now. If you love what you're doing, whether you have enough money to buy a Le Mans or a... Le Mans? Or, or, buy, or buy a cheeseburger. <laughs> It's a Pontiac, okay. No, what I meant is, um, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> no, whether you buy, I mean. Maserati, the you thing is, It's not the money, it's just, you know, if you enjoy what you're doing, it's fun because you never think about, oh, I want to have this, I want to have that. You want to be on stage and that's the reward, you know. If you buy a car and it's a great car, it looks great and it runs fast, it's great if you can handle the speed. If you can't handle the speed, you're going to wreck. And I think that's the same thing with success. If you obtain all this success and then you can't handle it, I think it just goes to waste. You sort of push the boat out into the water. You what know, else are you going to do? The anchor. Exactly. What are you going to do? You sink or swim. Be an so. accountant? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did I'm you have pretty, jobs? Cece's good at that. I mean, oh, like, sure. When he was, you look accountant. like an accountant. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, what happens is um, the four of us, I think, look to the, well, the three of us look to the other three. The four of us look to the other three. One being an individual. <laughs> this is where the accounting comes in. <laughs> no, <that's right. laughs> if I wasn't having fun, I wouldn't do it. I'd stop, most definitely. Even if it meant not having the money? I've already got the money. That's not why we were in it. You're not in it for the money? Mm -mm. What are you in it for? Rock and roll. I mean, I mean, I mean, if someone's gonna make money, we want to make it, you know, on us. But I mean, we're, we're a rock and roll band. We love. What so you're we in do. it for the music. I'm in it for the money. So there was Poison, multi-million dollar band, out there on the street handing out flyers. Mm -hmm. That was what we used to do. This is how we did it, actually. Mm -hmm. We would, um, during the day, we would rehearse. And at night, we'd go to clubs, you know, and hand stuff out. We, you know, we'd you know, try to look all cool and stuff and just go, hey, yeah, come on out and see the band, you know. At night, we'd go back, throw on our jeans, and be out there till 5 in the morning, you know what I'm saying? Like, trying so no one knew what we looked like then. You know, putting all our flyers up, wallpaper in it, and along would come another band, and they'd cover it up, and then you'd sneak back, and it's a war. You gotta promote, 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 take out ads. I'm just advertising. What's the name of your band? Sex. Shotgun Wedding. Vixen. Tara. Gypsy and the Troubadour. Tommy Rod. Velocity. Tough. Tough. Uh, dirty dirty Blonde. Blonde. Wet Cherry. The baddest band in the fucking universe. Little Door. Untimely Death. Cryptic Slaughter. Jaded Lady. I like passing out flyers because it's a good opening line on chicks. Because, you know, you can't walk up to a girl and say, um, do you know what time it is? That ain't cool. So you give them a flyer and they know you're in a band. They know you're not a roadie. We don't have our flyers yet. Um, we don't people. have enough money to get them printed. Um, we gonna make any money off this? Fifty percent of the girls take them. The guys, they just throw them down. Check this out, man. The guy, guy gives me a flyer, right? He gives me a flyer. I go, all right, cool. I'll be there, right? Cool. I'll come check out your band. And he walks about ten feet down the street. And I fucking wrinkle the shit up and throw it on the ground, man. Well, we finally got our flyers. Uh, we met a chick that um, had a little bit of money. We had her empty out her purse. Most of them just got out of high school and they don't know what to do and they can't get real jobs because they don't look right for real jobs. What do you do for a living? Um, I'm a professional musician. I work at Mrs. Fields Cookies. Legal secretary. I work for the LA Unified School District. We have a real sense of responsibility and we're taxpayers and in fact uh, are very prominent in the business world. We are also heavy metal rockers and we love it. I don't work. I can't stand work. Um, what was the last job you had? Uh, I've never had a job. Is it a drag not having money? Yeah. <laughs> you always hurting for money? Uh, yeah. Once you have money, you realize that it's really not important. What money gives you the opportunity to do is forget about money. I'd rather get rich at playing music than get rich uh, doing plumbing. Because I don't want to work until I'm 60 and die poor at 70. And have a fat wife bitching at me and 30 kids. I want to do my own thing. I'd like to have a, an apartment where we have carpeting on the floor, 
because uh, Mike picks his nose a lot and he has no place to put it. Did you uh, go to high school? No, I dropped out seventh grade. How come? I don't know, I just couldn't handle people telling me what to do. Disobedient boys, that's what we are. And why are you rebellious? Went to Catholic school for 12 years. You know, they talk about these big famous bands tearing apart hotel rooms and stuff, and the only time we've ever been able to stay in a hotel room, we tore the shit out of it, but it just came natural. My favorite one's when I read Poison jumped on the glam bandwagon. Wagon. <laughs> you don't think you did? We built the first wheel in that frickin' wagon. <laughs> well, second we are, right? Bowie, Alice. Can be. Men in makeup are where it's at. Me, personally, I might wear a little bit of eyeliner to bring out my eyes because they're not that big, but I'm not into wearing lipstick. Lipstick isn't me. It's a turnoff for me to kiss a guy that's got redder lipstick than I do. You know, it's just a way of life now. Because most guys, they don't know how to put it on, you know, they're dudes, they're, they're real clumsy. It's like putting on high heels, you're gonna fall all over the place, right? I used to go down to the corner and uh, hide my clothes underneath my jeans and put on my makeup in the corner in the car by candlelight. And they got that certain look that dazzles those little cutie girls. And then they put on makeup and we're talking sizzle with these guys. What I do is I, I take tips from girls. I, I let them put my makeup on, you know. I kind of, I get into it, it kind of turns me on a little. No, I'm, I'm not into that personally, but, you know, if it sells albums and records, yes. You know, if a guy came to pick me up for a baseball game or something and was wearing makeup, I probably wouldn't answer the door. I don't like it. I like a man that looks like a man. Do people look at you a lot? Yeah, well, that's the idea. It, it brings out the bisexual tendencies because women, women do like women, no matter what people say. My mom used to think I was a transvestite, you know, she'd, uh, checking her, you know, make sure I wasn't wearing her clothes and as such. And my mom still thinks I'm going through a phase in my life. And that she says, why don't you come home and cut your hair, you know, like the little boy I used to know. What do you think about the pretty rock and roll stars? Good luck to them if they're pretty. Wish I was. We've never gone out and put lipstick on and stuff like that and, and put hairspray so it looks like there's a trek blowing past us going 90, you know. It's a theatrical effect. I guess it's cool. It's when they wear it off stage and try and pat you on the ass, it worries me. Oh, sometimes it worries me. I've had a lot of guys whistle at me and think I was a chick, but... When I see it's a guy, I gotta I go back to the 18-year-old girl. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm driving in my car and somebody's in back of me, you know, honking at me, sometimes I like to just, you know, freak them out and, you know, kind of give them a little wave, and then they come by and they see me, and I'm just like, yeah. I just do a double twist, but then when I make sure, I keep walking. <laughs> the older we get and the uglier we get, the more makeup we got to put on, you know what I'm saying? It gets worse. It doesn't get any better. You look like a lady. <laughs> Oh, no, I want you to show us your breasts. Hello, Cat House! So tell me about Cat House, Ricky. There's more girls here than anywhere in the world. And we play rock and roll. All we do, now we don't like add in, a, some clubs will play a little bit of rock and roll. We play only rock and roll. And it's just a real big, fun, sleazy place. Cat House, welcome home! They left a while ago, now they're fucking rock stars! Faster, pussycat! What American rock and roll is all about. You want to know what rock and roll is about, come to the cat house. Because rock and roll is about a lot more than just music. It's more than music, it's just an attitude, you know? Me and my roommate needed a place where we could uh, have a party and not worry about the neighbors and getting free drinks and a place where we can meet strippers. So could you call this place a pickup joint? Definitely. That's 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 one of the main reasons it was opened up. Who do you think I found his ass, huh? Cat house. Describe some of the girls that come in here. I like the girls that come here. A lot of blonde girls come here. A lot of girls that uh, look like they come out of Russ Meyers films. They don't wear much clothes at the cat house. 
we have this policy of never really keeping the air conditioning on, so it gets really hot, so it's like, they show a lot of flesh here. I mean, I've seen girls walking around in garter belts and bras. I know, I like that. Somebody came here once from Texas and they go, I don't believe in Texas, we wear our lingerie in the bedroom, in the cat house, they wear them out in the club. You know, if you want to come here dressed really nice, that's okay, but you'll get in the club faster if you dress sleazy. <laughs> Comes here. Aerosmith, Motley Crue, Fast Pussy Catacores, Kiss has been here a couple times. David Lee Roth was here last week. So what did you guys do to get signed? Like flyers? Flyers. Or? We plastered them on their cars, plastered them on their homes, stuffed Stop them in their signs. face. They threw them down, we pick them up. Yeah, it's them You give them to people and they throw them down. Then you beat them up. Yeah, then you kick their ass. You what else like did you do to, to, to try to get signed? We tried to get Brett to blow Brett, Brett the, to blow the, the department department company. <laughs> But it didn't work. <laughs> so why are there so many like sexual references in your songs? Because Timmy is a sexual monster. <laughs> He's a dynamo. He is a sexual dynamo. I'm a love machine. So how come you guys are so obsessed with sex? Because we're young. We used, to, we used to be obsessed with money, but we never got any, so we had to like Give find up on something that. out. What about drugs? You use drugs? Uh, no. Alcohol. Aspirin. Aspirin. Like that vitamin Advil. So what makes your band different than the rest of the bands around? Tell me that. Because we have very large penises. And we don't, we don't wipe our butts, so it smells <laughs> bad. So why are you in rock and roll? I'm just doing this till I can be like the manager of McDonald's or something. <laughs> yeah. I'm, just, I'm just purely lazy, that's why I do it. Are you making a lot of money? No. no. <laughs> people, people on the road like go, give me your scarf, give me your hat. People think they made money, give me your jewelry. We get a thousand a night a show, on average, we probably play show, four shows a week. Costs us 2,500 to be on the road. So, so at this we point, it's just get into the record. We just go into that. You know, not until you're, I mean, we're new. Tour. What was that like? I was in a room with Tammy, and the, the rooms in Europe are really small, so they're the like beds right next to each other. And all the girls that he bring in, like, had, they had like braid, crazy stuff, braid yeah. fucking hairy arms. More and than shit. me. And they like know? hit me in the nose and while I was going to sleep. <laughs> it was really cool. You mean he brings the girls a... in the room and has sex when you're in the room? Well, yeah. we, got, we, we, got, we only got three rooms, you know, we got to share. <laughs> in San Francisco and we got pelted with rocks and garbage. Tammy broke someone's Tammy nose broke with a fucking mic stand. Well, they were mean. Boom. They were throwing like rocks at us and stuff. What does it feel like when they don't like you? Uh, we have to shove it in their face and tell them to eat shit because if they don't like it, tough luck. <laughs> eat a, bag, know, of eat a bag of shit. Eat a full bag of shit, buddy. Yeah. You are the definitive hard rock band that really set the standards. How do you feel about that? I love it. I think, you know, we took it to the mountain. And 
It's still there. It's, it's not- rhythm and blues, it's twos and fours, it's fucking, you know, you can really fuck to a good Aerosmith song. It's R&B, it's those twos and fours, it's... It's the swing. It's the swing. It's the jazz of it all. It's... Did you look at the dolls and say, "Gee, they've got a good look. We should look like that." Oh yeah, I think. I mean, I was in awe. I loved it. David Johansson had. They used to say I was a Mick Jagger look-alike. Man, he had lips for miles. I mean, that guy could swallow the earth, <laughs> and has. Did you try to make a comeback to make money? Because you were running Shit, out. Yes, undoubtedly. Yeah. Well, you know, we're not. In, I mean, you got to buy your guitar strings somewhere. You know. You making a lot of money. Yeah. Have you made a lot of money in your yeah. day? Yeah. Yeah. Millions. You have? Oh, yeah. Where is it now? Went up my nose. <laughs> <laughs> I must have snorted up all of Peru. It to was. survive the 60s and the 70s, it's a, it's a fucking miracle. You think you could have been dead? Oh, God, I was several times. <laughs> <laughs> we had used drugs for so many years, it's like, you know, you, you burn out the punch card, you know? I mean, you've only got so many drinks in your life. I think I used all of mine in 35 years, you know? I was looking forward to having a few sips on the porch when I get older, but ain't, ain't in the cards, you know? Joe and I are the toxic twins, baby. Known as being that. Are you uh, proud of it? Uh, no. You know, uh, no one, uh, yes that I went through it, but know that all people uh, know it. They might think that that's the way to do it, you know? And that isn't the way. Uh, that's not the way at all because, you know, we painted ourselves into a major corner. Yeah, we figured it was the only thing to do is, is clean up. How long know? has that been? Oh, it's been 11 months now. And how do you feel? Oh, it's still hung over a little bit. No, we're, we're doing good. We were feeling sick and tired of feeling sick and tired. Do you feel now that you can still do it without drugs? Positively better, too. Keep it up longer. It's like, you know, it's like jerking off when you're, when you're a young kid and you fir- first learn how to use that thing, you know, you go Brrr. But the older you get, the slow you slow down, you know, and you get into the rhythm of it and you learn how to milk it for all it's worth. And I think that's what Aerosmith, that's what Aerosmith is right now. I think we do, we do a good job of, of fucking. Okay, um, how do you feel about other bands ripping you off? I don't know if they rip us off. I mean, I can't hear anybody that sounds like us. Well, don't you hear I the think, bands on the ra- I mean, yeah, I yeah, I hear it, but I don't hear that. I don't hear that much Aerosmith as other people do. Aerosmith to me is really definitive. Maybe some of the attitude some of the bands have, which is cool. We stole it from other people. It's like it's almost like Tyler said one time. You know what I mean? He said that he said with rock and roll, he goes. In, in the history, you know, everyone's doing something that someone else already did, so you're repeating yourself, but you're doing it with your own style. Do you get mad if, if a band copies your style? No. Good luck to them. Maybe they'll do something we can copy later. I could think of a few of them that I would like to have right about now, right about here. To be perfectly honest, there's nobody who's original. Nobody who's original out there. We're all thieves. Some of them are just pure plagiarists. I won't mention any names. Initials start with... <laughs> Imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, and it's nice to know that you made some mark on music. Kiss supported Black Sabbath in, in, some, in the early 70s, and that was the first time I'd ever really saw a magnificent spi- stage production with theatrics. I mean, they were incredible. They were the, 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 they were the forerunners of today, you know. I think it's very important to, to be an innovator, and since we were the first to do any of this, it's, it's fun to still be doing it, and as far as I'm concerned, still doing it better than any of the bands that are copying us. Why do you put those uh, scarves on your microphone stand? So I can wipe my nose, blow my nose. What do you think when you see guys putting scarves all over their microphone stands? I don't know. You should get a royalty. Why is that? Well, he's, he was doing it a long time ago. I mean, if I write something, I get a royalty for it or someone else uses it. Sorry, Steven. Yeah. So, Bobby, what do you have to say to people who might think that maybe your music isn't totally original? His brother. <laughs> There's more bands in L.A. than there are anywhere else in the world because most of the record companies and labels and high management corporations are based in Los Angeles. A lot of the people who play in bands aren't originally from Los Angeles. Good evening, where's the dudes from Detroit? Like, playing and driving sort of goes hand in hand. You know, you do a five grand launch from a dead stop. Same thing as when you walk out in front of a crowd and everybody's like, ah, you know, same blast, you know. It's just a rush of adrenaline. Are you, know? you in it for the money? No, if I was in it for the money, I'd have left a long time ago. You know? Are you in it for the fame? That would be nice, but you know, it's just like something. Uh, I do, I enjoy doing it. You know, it's like. Are you in it for the chicks? No, at first I might have thought of being like that, but then you realize that 
half the chick there is going to be out there that you're going to be with that aren't worth the time anyways, you know. Well, she wanted to get married and she wanted me to have the 9 to 5 lifestyle and the merry-go-normal kind of, you know. If you're going to bump into some chick and you just pull into town and she's going to fuck you, you know she's fucked everybody else from this star on down, so what's the point? I mean, that's pretty much conquered ground, you know. hungry you go broke but if you believe in yourself you fucking make it you know where you see yourself in 10 years retire live in someplace nice my stocks working for me investments bonds securities you know shit like that i'm responsible i got long hair but fuck i'm a businessman you know yes i have devoted all of my life to rock and roll does that ever get scary for you yeah because i i wonder sometimes if i uh if i wind up 45 years old and I never did anything or something like that. Why do people devote their whole life to rock and roll? Well, if you want to become famous, it usually takes your whole life to get there, you know? I mean, you keep on going and going and going and it's like, well, you're almost there, you're almost there, and it's like, oh, you know. Crash Landing, it's about, I was weird, we wrote the music for it and I was thinking about an idea for the song and there was a plane crash and uh, I, we just thought about, you know, it'd be kind of neat to write a song about that, what it would be like if you were the pilot of the plane and like what you'd be going through as you're, you know, getting ready to crash. <laughs> Probably every day I say that. I'm busting my balls at this. Of course I want to make it. You know? I mean, you know, whatever it takes, man. Last drop of blood, you know, because I'm in it, you know, till the death or whatever. Why did you get into rock and roll in the beginning? Because I noticed that you got lots of girls. Girls, all sizes, all shapes, big, small, short, tall. Nice. Jesus Christ, when we toured with Kiss, they were like like monsters, man. It lines up of chicks outside their rooms every night. You know, what the, what's the matter with me? I'm trying to pull the stragglers, you know. Talk to me a little bit about the girls that approach you. Oh, which who's that? Fine with Why me. did somebody say something? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about groupies? I love them. Amazing. They're great. Yeah. Just amazing, you know. They keep a young man hard. It's a way of life, you know. It's like your alter ego. They're, they're doing the same thing you are. I mean, you're in a band and you love it. You love the music that you're playing, uh, you know. And you see them freaking out and loving it. It's just, you know. It just reinforces the way you feel. In the 60s, they used to call them groupies, you know, so I like to call them the fleas and ticks of rock and roll. That's that's my motto. The, the best groupies are in Salt Lake City, and uh, I've had four of them at a time. So you, you get into group sex? Uh, yeah, it's happened. <laughs> it's happened. We've had four or five times since we've been here. Yeah. How long have you been here? Five, five weeks. weeks. <laughs> Do you often see girls take off their shirts at your concerts? Yeah. It's a... It's our form of salute. We go, hello, and they go, hello. Leads me to an interesting story. One day I was in my hotel room, and Brett's room was next to mine, and I heard this girl screaming and pounding on the door. This girl with really long hair sits in the, sits on the bar stool by the side of us, and we don't know, and suddenly she goes bang and falls on the floor. So she says, I'll only stay a while. All right, so we become fast friends. We swap spit. He gets her by the, the legs, and I get her by the shoulders. 
And I got her by the shoulders, and I, 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 I get so far up with her, and she starts wobbling and screaming. Oh, what's the matter with her? I finally got out of bed, and I said, the hell with this, I'm gonna go, go do something about it. I walk outside, and the door, his door opens, and the girl comes running out. So I don't know how to get rid of this girl. She says, what do you want of me? And I suddenly realized I had my foot on her hair. She was there for 15 minutes trying to get out of his room. <laughs> I said, go up to the 23rd floor where the uh, road crew is and take care of them. And she's like doing an epileptic fit on me. I was like, my God. <laughs> <laughs> if I woke up and looked at me in the morning, I'd be screaming too to get out. You know? And I don't know what happened, but the next day the road crew was very friendly. Have you ever said to yourself, I could fall in love with this groupie? <laughs> <laughs> have I ever Have, have I you ever, ever said that? to yourself, I could fall in love with this groupie? Yeah. Probably not, because I'd have to think that uh, somebody in every other band had also. Paul Stanley said one time that if you're going to make it be successful, you got to get rid of your women. This is the way you want to live, then you can live like this. And we can safely say that th since this is a documentary film that you actually do live like this. As often as I can. Guys in the metal scene are, are fun. Uh, you can take advantage of them just as guys can take advantage of the girls in the metal scene, you know what I'm saying? In heavy metal music, women are portrayed to be abused. Um, they're kind of... Uh, being bound in chains. Many of the styles portray them as having handcuffs on, leg irons, being locked in cages. There's a very brutal aspect towards the woman in heavy metal because it very much appeals to the male macho image. I don't think people take girls seriously in this sort of music. I don't know why that is. Because there hasn't been anybody to prove that girls can really, really rock. Can girls play rock and roll as good as guys? You bet. Damn right we can. Shit. We rock, we kick right. ass. You get a lot of chicks from being in the band? Oh, fuck, you get all the chicks from being in the band, especially the singer I get the most. <laughs> oh, that's fine, that's a stereotype, but the minute the girl goes out with a bunch of guys, she's a slut. What's your favorite pastime? <laughs> sex. <laughs> rock and roll and sex. Girls. Girls. Favorite pastime? Pop Big girl. titties. What's your favorite pastime? Sex, definitely. All the time. Every yeah. day, at <laughs> least three or four times. What kind of guys do you like? Uh, musicians, unfortunately. <laughs> Why? Because <laughs> they're irresponsible assholes, but they look good. <laughs> when I'm playing, they seem so mesmerized by what I'm doing on stage. It's just instantly, they're mine, you know? They have attitude. I know that sounds kind of weird, but I like attitude. My personal taste? I like sluts. I like slutty girls. I like girls that will take off all their clothes right in front of me and dance in my face. That turns me on. Does this happen a lot, Matthew? Yeah. It's, it's a rock and roll band. I mean, you know. It all, it's, it's great all to feel that hair above you, you know, <laughs> falling down. So uh, when they're on stage or when they're in no, bed? No, in bed. <laughs> okay. Or on the floor or in the, in the bathroom, <laughs> on the table. Are you afraid of getting AIDS? I never really thought about it. You can't screw someone in and think, all right, just lay that chick because she's going to go, honey, you're dead, you know? <laughs> you know, I, I, I myself, I go out with girls whose stepdads are gynecologists, so that really helps out a lot. With yeah. the AIDS problem? Yeah, yeah, a lot of that. And birth control? Um, I don't really worry about that. A lot of girls chase after you? Yes, they do. The chicks take care of me a lot. Well, I just had this chick sew up my pants today or else you guys would see my dick hanging out the bottom here. <laughs> you didn't do a very Sorry. good job, dude. You know, if it's not money, it's taking us here, taking us there, you know, promote, helping Buying us, us promote. new clothes. Yeah, and boots. Got some new pants. <laughs> it's kind of a rule that chicks don't get in the house unless they have a sack of groceries with them, you know. And let me tell you, when your stomach's growling, you haven't had anything for a couple of days, you don't, all of a sudden, your moral value is just sort of like... <laughs> Okay, hon, if you want to pay for dinner, that's fine with me. You know, a lot of guys in this scene let girls take care of them financially. What do you think about that? I think that's sad. Yeah, Sounds that's horrible. In, in a sense, it's a, it's a form of prostitution. But do you ever go out with a girl just so that she would, you know, pay for some food, whether if you didn't like her? Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I Isn't would. that prostitution? Uh, no. I wouldn't see it that way. No. I don't see it that way. No. Would you let some guy pay for you? No. What are you going to do for them? Uh, anything they want right now that I can do. <laughs> what do you do for them? <laughs> you know, when I have a little money, I'll buy them the nice things, the pretty furs, and the, and the cars, and the Rolls Royces, and the whole, the whole shebang. You're going to remember them? Oh, yeah. <laughs> How long has one been together? Two years. 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 Two years.
too far. Since 1979. Uh -huh. Yeah, well, this is like the uh, training school for rock stars. Yeah. It seems like we get somebody in the band, and uh, as soon as they leave, they become rock stars. <laughs> so who else has been in the band? A couple of dudes from Guns N' Roses, a uh, dude from uh, Wasp, and uh, Nikki Six of Motley Crue, Freddie Corey of Cinderella. Oh, I'd like to tell you that uh, we do appreciate you guys being here, and we like to have your cooperation to make us look bitchin', all right? See, we've been in this town for so long that like we're like a cheap hooker on the street. <laughs> Nobody wants to know about it. So what happens is we, we have a big following out of town. We come back here, they offer us 50 bucks to play at the Troubadour or, or wherever. On a Tuesday. <laughs> on a Tuesday. <laughs> but we will do it for bar tab. Yeah. So you guys are gonna be in the picture right here. So if you can just like stick your hands up in the air, make yourself look, show us your underalls. All right. I just found out when I was in my hotel room that 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 oral sex was illegal. Now that fucking After bummed years. that fucking bummed me out. Can you I love to eat pussy. Can they you imagine? That, you're under arrest. Oh. <laughs> now come Three on. Years. We were rather shocked to hear that, really. Yeah. But uh, unfortunately, we did break the law an awful lot when we were in Arizona. Yeah. <laughs> Girls in other cities are great because uh, it's always two or three that are totally loaded with money. Here's what London is. Our dicks get real hard for gold cards. <laughs> they do, they do. No. You guys are fucking losing it, man. You're not here for me. You're here for you know what. Women make you feel very, very good when they're out front of you and they just start fucking sucking their own hands and sucking their own fingers and, and throwing notes at you and taking their tops off. And Oh my God, not more fog. First of all, girls like him when you talk dirty to them, especially right here, okay? You just tell them that you want to bend them over, kiss their toes, lift their butt up in the air, and you look at it with the lights. Yeah. Yeah. We are not role models for your life. Was with this chick, but this chick was a little weird. She was using these cuffs, and there was nowhere to cuff me up, and she wanted to cuff me up. And all there was is, is a desk with handles, so she used the handle in a fucking drawer. Why would she want to cuff you up? Because she wanted to sit there and play with herself. Okay. With you cuffed to the desk? Yeah. Shit, I loved it. Anyway, she left me there. I fell asleep, and I'm like this. Last time you had a job? Eight years ago. <laughs> we don't work. This is we play music. Why? I've never had a job. The We're girls have always the out. girls have always been very generous. Well, I'm currently like I'm still employed. I'm a professional gynecologist. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. when's the last time you had a job? Uh, well, uh, this is my job. You know, as far as I'm concerned, this is what I do, and I I believe in it. You know, this is rock and roll. I do this. So I mean, I, I don't consider that uh, I'm like lazy or something, or that I don't do a job because do I you, bust my fucking ass doing rock and roll. Do you rock. always have money? No. Sometimes we do, and sometimes we don't. We're we're our in record. debt for a hundred grand <laughs> right now. Yes, we are, but we're getting out of that. <laughs> How could you be in debt for a hundred grand? We bought a lot our, of equipment. Our last album we did was financed by this guy who's in jail right now. <laughs> Yeah, but um, he's no, out was... now. Now he wants his money. <laughs> All right, see this? You know that bullshit going out there for the fucking Russians, huh? 
I'm sick of listening to these motherfuckers. You know how they say the Russians are coming over here? They got shit. Ha ha. Surprise. Uh oh, this fucker is tough. Come on, motherfucker. I ain't got no day. This song is for the Russian. This is called Russian Winter. making flame pots for the uh, song Russian Winter and what we did was we uh, wanted big flames so we put a lot of uh, extra gunpowder and flash powder together. So we basically got your uh, standard uh, concussion bomb yeah. six at once. <laughs> I left for Chicago, so-called to do business. I went and did nothing. This cop was sitting there, this douchebag. I mean, this guy was an idiot. Anyway, I get in to, I get in to get to the car, and he goes, get out of here, come on, get your ass out of here. And I go, fuck you. To the cop? Oh, yeah. He was a fucking... If you would have seen this guy, this is not an alley cop. Alley cops, they look good, and they look big, and they look nuts, and they're young and pissed off, and they're ready to kick ass. And I'm sitting in the cab with the door open, and he grabs me by the hair. And that was it. I go, motherfucker, I go, this ain't a grip. I go, you know. What happened? Let me see So he eye. hit me in the eye. Right here. But it's cool. I whacked him about six times. And then I got my ass kicked after that. Where do you guys live? Well, you mean I, right now? Yeah. Right now, I don't have a steady home, no. Okay. We're kind of on the road. We're yeah. kind of in transit right now. We're strollers. Because when I wanted to shoot you, I want to go to one of your homes, but you didn't have one. Yeah, that's a problem for us. Yeah, it's usually a restaurant or a bar. <laughs> yeah, we'll, sure, we'll be there. And we show up and we're decked out and let's go, and you'll never know what happened. Where do they go? you think about yourselves as rock stars? No. no. What's it like being a, a living legend? Kids out there think you've got a guitar, you make a hit record, and you make millions of dollars, and you just live happily ever after. It isn't that way at all. It's like very hard work, very hard break, and you get your rewards, and, and, and things... You, know, you do get a lot of things like gold discs, platinum discs, cars, houses, and, you know, then you've got things like divorces, management ripoffs, fatigue, drugs, alcohol, you know, hangovers, and you gotta go, and the next night you've been up all night burning your bridges, and you gotta go, hi guys, it's good to be back on stage again. You know, you're feeling like crap inside, you know? I very often ask them, what do they think I would be doing if I wasn't rock and roll? And I, and I keep saying, you know, my answer to that is I'd probably be in prison. Why is that? Because I just wanted, I didn't want to get a regular job. I couldn't conform to any system. I didn't want to get a job at a, fa I had several jobs in factories and, you know, different jobs. But rock and roll, it's got this sort of, uh, uh, outlawish thing with it. You, know, you can do what you want and you don't have to get up and listen to some big fat baldy old fart telling you to take this box and stick it over there, you know. So tell me about, you know, what happened when all of a sudden you got rich and you could buy the, everything you wanted. And well, what, what happened? It, it didn't work out exactly like uh, Cinderella. We got started to think we were like gods. We all went out and bought fast cars and everything. But we had a manager. And as become, because we came from the back streets of Birmingham, we didn't have any much of a, a business education. We let him con us as it was. We got ripped off for lots of money in the early days, but we didn't care. 
We were seeing America, we were having fun, screwing as many groupies as we could, smoking as much dope, getting just, you know, out of it in general. And basically having a good time. And that was the fun years because we, we started, until we suddenly realised one day, hey, we must be earning a lot more than this guy's actually given us. So it's not all uh, no, it's not. a pretty story. It's hard bloody work and you've, you've got to be a businessman and I'm not a businessman, you know. You know, I'm, I'm very fortunate to, in, to this day now. My wife is my manager. She, she knows the business, but I, I don't know the business side of rock and roll. I don't want to know it either. We came to America, and we, we, we thought, like, drugs and all that was just a part of the gig, you know? You know, you just get stoned and you just get fucked up and that, and that made you gig and all that. And what happened with Black Sabbath? We all ended up junkies and alcoholics and everything. Like, the drummer ended up in a, in a, in a, in a re rehabilitation center. I did for a while, and, and, and in, in the end, disaster happens. It's, it's, uh, it's inevitable to happen, disaster, because it's like drugs, they were okay at the time, but we outgrew them, you know. We just, you know, we took LSD, we took cocaine, we took vast amounts of uh, marijuana. It was fun at the time, but then so we, and we all just sort of, so it's not, not a very good idea anymore. So you have a more stable life now? No. <laughs> Back in Control is an organization that is designed to show parents how to regain control of the child's behavior. Right there, sir. Okay, turn around. Turn around. Come here, man. Go ahead, fill me up, man. What do you want me to do, bend over? One of the things that we have found, which we call demetaling, is a program that actually gets the kid out of heavy metal. Wait a minute. We have certain rules. Removal of heavy metal albums or tapes. Um, not allowing the child to dress in any style of heavy metal, which would mean taking these kinds of things away from him, not allowing him to wear the, the heavy metal t-shirts that depict the band members with pictures of monsters or skeletons or whatever, graves on them. Here, take it, take it. Hurry up, hurry up, come on, come, 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 come on. Here. This right here just covers the forearm, and again, it's just used as, as garb, and it, it basically talks about an image related to heavy metal, which is one of power. Oh, 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 dude, I got a gun. Cuff the hands, cuff the hands. Cuff your hands. This also is worn over the forearm. And this was homemade. As you can tell, it has just screws and nuts in it and a piece of sheet metal. I used to do drugs. I used to have lighters that I could put She's stuff in. Druggy. She's clean. This right here is a collar that is worn around the neck. And also it could prevent any kind of chokehold if, if you get involved in a riot and the police are trying to, to get... Con contain the uh, situation. Special legs, come on, come on, come on. For youngsters on probation, under probation supervision, oftentimes this will constitute a, a weapon and they are not allowed to wear this. Have you heard of people getting hurt with those things? Oh, yes. Check my ass as much as you want. Here you go. The devil horns. Black Sabbath, yeah. Many kids, if you ask them, they'll say, well, it means heavy metal. It looks like two fingers poking up, but... It's kind of like a horn. You know how to do that? No, like this. No, like this. It's the two fingers up to represent the authority of the devil. People would go, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's a sign of evil, I guess. Or it could be the sign of Satan, according to the Jesus Krispies outside the arena with this their big true. Jesus posters. The three fingers down to represent the denial of the Trinity. This is Satan's head and this is his horns, and if you do this, you're absolutely possessed. Also within this hand gesture, we have our three sixes. A six here, a six here, and a six here, which represents the 666 in the book of Revelations in the Bible. I like death and destruction and frenzy and hatred. Not that I like doing it or anything, I just like reading about it and hearing it, just like, you know, someone likes horror movies or novels. A lot of people would think you'd be a violent person, are you? No, I'm not violent. Do you think Ozzy is a, you know, messenger of the devil? Does it's it really bother you that they accuse you of being It satanic? pisses me off. It, it, it does piss me off. It's hard to tell what Ozzy's intentions are, but the thing that we see is the behavior that results from kids who take the lyrics literally. Just... So you're not really into the devil then, huh? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Bill Gazzari, the godfather of rock and roll, and welcome to Gazzari's On The Strip in Hollywood, California. You can see when, when the public comes in, they're normal. After about a half hour of rock and roll, they're no longer normal. They're jumping all over the place. I mean, you have to pick them off the wall. Tell me about the Gazzari dancers and the contest. We started to have a Gazzari dance contest, 
And then we started to have it every week with the finals every year. And then we started giving out the title Miss Kazari Dancer of the Year. There's been so much fucking bullshit about this contest being fixed that I'm gonna make damn sure you all understand this. At the end of the contest, when they announced all the winners, the judges sheets will be available at the front door for any motherfucker to inspect. And that ought to take care of all the fucking bullshit about this contest being fixed. And we are missing a couple of asses here. It's a classy place, and it, it's on sunset, and you think Beverly Hills is classy. They can't hold a candle to this place. find yourself wanting to wear earplugs in here? Well, I, I do put cotton in my ears when I come in, but I hear the music better than me. What was the best part of that? Getting up there in front of a million people and really doing it. What are you going to do now? Are you going to... Um... I'm going to continue on my modeling and great. Um, hopefully I'll get on with my actressing, shooting some movies. Do you feel bad that you're almost finished with the title? Not at all. I'll be happy to turn over my crown and, I'll, and I hope the best for them. for winning the contest. I mean, a feeling of accomplishment. Really? Any. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's a catalyst for my future career. If you win, what are you going to do with the $1,000? Um, hopefully invest it into something like a down payment on a condo. That's what I'm trying to do right now. <laughs> out of the dance contest i you know i like to watch a chick dance but if she wants to dance you come over to my house and dance for me not for a million dudes you know so what'd you think was the dance contest fun that's yeah, you... stupid doesn't belong in music get it away from it oh, it's fucking fun. get a comedian uh, out there. These guys are personal friends of mine. This Randy, I love him. He's gonna be bigger than David Lee Roth, who started right here. Help me bring on my pal Randy and Odin. Let's go, Odin, Odin. He's believed in us for a long time. That's right. For a very long time. Odin, 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 Odin. I mean, I know personally that I want, I mean, I want it to go as big as like Zeppelin or the Rolling Stones or the Beatles or like that. I mean, I don't want to be another band. I don't want to be right. just another fucking band. Odin, 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 Odin. Well, I just want to be extremely wealthy. I want to be ex remembered for the rest of my life and for my grandchildren's grandchildren's lives. Odin, Odin, Odin. And they're going to be very, very big in the rock and roll world. Mm -hmm. Besides a singer is a foxy guy. <laughs> Randy, 
Why do you wear pants that don't have no butt in them? Well, yeah. Because it ventilates yeah. my scrotum sack. <laughs> So how long do you think till Odin gets signed? The next four to six months. Yeah. And then what's gonna happen? And then we're super startup. Inter super <laughs> galactic <laughs> startup. If you want to take me serious, you can. If you don't want to take me serious, you don't have to. But all I'm saying is this space, people are gonna fucking remember it, okay? And it's gonna go down in history, and I know that. I don't want to be like Jim Morrison, but I want to go down in history like that, or Robert Plant, or right. any of the really bigger people. And I feel that it's within us and within me. What if it doesn't happen? It's gonna happen. Why do you girls hang out with this band? Because they have good music and yeah, really. they're good looking. <laughs> really good looking. Do you guys ever get discouraged? Uh, yeah, there are times when we get really discouraged. I mean, I, I've been known to be suicidal and stuff like that. It's scary sometimes, you know, what I'm going to be doing in maybe five or ten years if, if it doesn't happen. Or Have you have you ever seriously uh, tried to kill yourself? I've come pretty close. Yeah, I feel I have. I have OD'd and How? stuff like that. Yeah, that's that's why I don't do drugs anymore and stuff because it, <laughs> yeah, I have right OD'd on drugs. Give me a <laughs> frustrated when your potential isn't tapped into at the time you know you feel like you could be there and you're not and it's just that's the frustration you know it's like you have a one million dollar check in your head and you have no place to cash it and is that worth killing yourself for? at times it can be when you think about being immortal superstars yeah it can be i've never thought of killing myself but i've thought of uh like going out and being a bum living on skid row <laughs> you know taking the easy way out so it's either a rock and roll star or a bum. That's your that's your trip. That's it. I think we're ready for 12 o'clock. Yeah. Every club we've ever played in within the last two years, and we're being virtually ignored. That's frustrating. Is it worth killing yourself for if you don't make it? Well, there's nothing else that I could really do except music, you know? And that's how I feel. That's all I really want to do in my life is music. And if I can't do that, then fuck everything else around me, really. <laughs> going to be a rock star? Oh, yes. Yeah, I'm going to be famous rock star. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to be a rock star. Going to be a rock star is. I'm going to be a rock star. I am going to be. I mean, I wouldn't mind being like, you know, a rock star or nothing. But as long as rock star is defined as rich and rich, I think that it'll come pretty easily for me, you know, because I'm different from everyone else. 
What if you don't make it as a rock star? Oh, I will. But what if you don't? In 10 years, what are you going to be doing? See, I, I will, though, see. What if you don't make it? I, but I will. I will make it. For sure. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to quit until I do. The main key is perseverance, and I will persevere. That question is not in my mind. The minute you doubt is the minute you lose it. What if I don't make it? I'll find a vacant drainage ditch or something and lay my bed down. I don't know. I end up on Skid Row or something. I don't know. I don't know where I'm going to be. Doesn't it worry you? No. Unlike him, though, it really doesn't enter my mind. I, have, I can't really, I can't picture not making it. It's, you, you see, if you came and hurt us, you'd, you'd really, you'd think the same thing, too. That you were definitely going to make it? Oh, yeah. What if 10 years from now it doesn't happen? I don't believe that, that it won't, because you can do anything in life you want. There ain't nothing in this world you can't do. Do you have a backup plan? No. <laughs> No such thing. No, no backup. <laughs> I don't know how to do anything else but rock and roll. That's all, that's all we do. I'm a singer. Well, I got no choice. Why? Uh, we all fucked up in school. We all, you know, we're just, this is what we're, we're here for. What if you don't end up a rock star? No. Yeah. Well, if I don't, then I'll, I'll die trying. What do you think your tombstone will say? I, I don't want a tombstone. I, don't, I, just, I just want somebody to dig a ditch and throw me in, you know? See you later, pal. Have a good one. When you were a little kid, did you want to be a rock star? Yes, I did. Definitely. But you wouldn't let me. I go, Mom, can I take a you know, rock guitar? She says, uh, well, no, you can't, because you'll turn them and you'll turn them on those drug-infested rock stars. <laughs> Do you like touring? Yeah, I love it. I've I've had women like like uh in, in my hotel room, uh, four of them at a time, say, hey, take your drawers off. And if they don't, then I call my security guard next door. And they come, he throws them right out. <laughs> Get out of here. Yeah. Well, what do you think about that, Sandy? <laughs> I don't think about if, it. If you can tour one year, if you can tour one year, uh, it'll take four years off your life. You know, five, four years, five. <laughs> so, Chris, how many gold records do you have? I ship one, two, three, four, five, six. I don't know. Who cares? Who knows? I don't know. So do you five, six, ten, twelve, who cares? Do you consider yourself um... a piece of crap? Why? Well, because, you know, I work a job and I'm a piece of crap. <laughs> Does it bother you that this lifestyle is uh, dangerous to your health? Uh, health? What do you mean health? Look at me. Well, I look 40, 30. How old are you? 20. I'm, I'm 29. I, I'm what they call an old fuck. Look at my mom. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> what do you think you're going to be doing 10 years from now? Uh, 10, I, I'll probably be dead. You can come see my graveyard. Mom, have a drink. Chris, do you yes, drink very much? Pardon? Do you drink very much? Uh, yes, I do. I'm a full-blown alcoholic. Just when he's awake. I, I drink too much. Here. OK. Why do you drink that much? Because uh, I enjoy it. Do you think a rock and roll lifestyle turns you into an alcoholic? Yes, it does. How much of that do you drink a day? About five pints. A vodka? Yeah. Five quarts, pints, who cares? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a happy camper. <laughs> Do you think that maybe um, this kind of, you know, rock and roll lifestyle is, is hard on you and maybe that's why you drink? Well, I'm a full-blown alcoholic. And uh, why I drink is because, what, what? What? But why do you drink, Chris? Ah, uh, because it makes me happy. Happy. Uh, I enjoy drinking. I enjoy, I just enjoy life. I'm I'm the happiest son of a bitch and motherfucker there ever was. Why do you get so loaded, though? Well, because it's the only thing that, that lets me get free. Yeah. You know? 
You think you might be covering up some pain? Ah, uh, yeah, over. What would that be from, I wonder? Oh, here. Do you, do you like this label? Sure. This. Let's not avoid the issue. What would that be from? Uh, this, okay, here, I'll watch. Do you wish, Chris, do you wish that you were um, a bigger star than you are right now? Do I wish what? That you were a bigger star than you are. Um, not really. I wish I was a smaller star. I don't, I don't, I don't dig being the person I am. Uh, and I just don't, I just don't like it. Uh, I just don't. Being the person who, who says like, uh, excuse me. Uh, being who I am is like, here what? I had a whiskey bottle the size of the Empire State Building in front of me all the time. I have a disease called alcoholism and drug, 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 drug dependency. I am actually an alcoholic now, I guess. I think I'm probably uh, about four on the Richter scale of alcoholism. I was always at about 3.2 at all times. If I would have been stopped driving at any time, even if I hadn't had anything to drink for two weeks, I would still have been legally drunk. I don't get tired of waking up hungover and having to do a couple of lines and a couple of beers just to get moving, you know? Which is where it was at. And then you gotta get that together so you can go and cop dope. What was the Betty Ford Clinic like? Boring. No, actually, the educational value was okay. It, it made me realize that I was an alcoholic and I am a, a drug addict. But I still am an alcoholic and you always are, you know? It's, um... But you feel better now. No. But after a while, when you do it so much, it's not the same as the first time. You know, it turns into, uh, it turns against you, especially with drugs. Did rock and roll do it to you? Well, yeah, I guess it did, because we got a free bottle backstage every show, you see, so... I mean, you don't want to leave, you know, the last quarter of the bottle, so you tend to finish it up, you know? The worst thing I can imagine is hurting yourself. You may as well just jump off a building. I mean, what's the, what's the difference? These bands really want to make it. They stay away from drugs. Maybe these kids will do the drugs that, like, float for free every once in a while, but that doesn't happen much. It's just there's not enough time. Most of the kids who want to make it stay away from drugs. No, I'm not into drugs. Uh, I think drugs suck. It's their bullshit. I mean, we've seen them ruin a lot of people. Personally, I find that I don't need drugs to have a good time. All I need is loud music and a lot of friends. I don't think you can enjoy a show if you go and get all wasted and, you know, don't even remember the show the next day. So Basically, <laughs> the metal is a drug to me. Yeah. I don't need to, to get strung out on anything. If I hear like Sabbath Volume 4, that is my drug. You can't be a musician and a drug addict. You're either one or the other. <laughs> I, I don't know. People ask me if I'm an alcoholic. Um, I guess you can consider me an alcoholic. I drink every day. But I, I, don't, I don't think I let it affect my life. I show up for band practice. I mean, that's all that's important. We do drugs, we do alcohol. That doesn't mean you should do it. <laughs> Sex, drugs, and rock and roll used to be a fun thing to do, but it ain't anymore. You can play Russian roulette for five years and uh, never get hurt, and then one time you pull the trigger and it's all over. The thing is, belief in yourself, it should be the drug, really. Your confidence is what should really inspire you and keep you going and doing what you want to do. I think a lot of people look to people in show business, or anybody who's famous, to model their lifestyle on. One of my role models was Keith, you know, and every once in a while I'd see him. Uh, we'd exchange goodies. Uh, but I always looked up to him for getting rip roaring uh, for the way of life that he lived. And it was a way of life for him, it still is. And sometimes they're your friends, and you have to stop being their friend when they don't listen because it's like somebody drowning. They'll drag you down with them. It's just not worth it. So uh, if you're modeling your lifestyle on somebody and it turns out that they died on smack, that's not very clever, see? I don't think there's anything admirable about being a dead legend, and that's probably the reason why I'm not into it. It was killing me, and I, and I felt that I was probably much more effective alive than dead. I wouldn't put that to a vote. Go check out Jim Morrison and Jimi Hendrix and Janis Joplin. That's not my idea of fun. Because it's a lot of hours of throwing up blood and stuff like that. And, and if you're going to do that on stage, it's great, but it's not that much fun in a Holiday Inn, you know? I have a prescription for a happy life, which is sex, drums, and rock and roll.
won't let that go, but the uh, rules of my contest is that that's a little bit too skimpy because we're looking for Gazari dancer, not kind of a little risque stuff like that. There will be no bikinis or G-strings or stuff like that. They have to wear foxy rock and roll clothes. <laughs> Boo! 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 Okay, I'll tell you what. Why don't you guys run a contest? Okay? You mean, you want a strip contest instead? Okay. In the streets, yes, you want to meet all the new sensations. They just looked at a sex object. Because afterwards, the guys make fun of them anyway. You can hear them talking about them, making fun of them. She starts taking all her shit off, right? And then all of a sudden, I noticed while she's dancing, she doesn't have any fucking underwear on her. And we're sitting there like, fuck, we have muff, we have muff. <laughs> You know what? He ended up that night with the, the fifth runner-up. Oh, yeah. all right. I want to learn how to turn me So, Bill, you walk around the club all the time with these 18-year-old girls, and people ask you how you do it, right? What do you say? I liked 18-year-old girls when I was 18. I love them now. Why should I stop? <laughs> They say you're not like a 60 year old guy, you're like three 20 year old guys. What only energy you have? <laughs> Rock and roll forever! <laughs> That's a cut. So, what's the biggest audience you ever played for? Well, was, that would be in, probably in Hungary. How right? many people? 27,000. 83,000. 83,000. 146,000 people. 158,000 people in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Which is still a record. You beat I think. Kiss. Um, yeah. Well, wow. we always try. You know. Yeah. <laughs> You're looking at it, 83,000 people thinking, man, I got to entertain these people. I mean, you know what I'm saying? 83,000 shoes times two makes, what is that? A state. <laughs> and there were, it wasn't police there, there was the army. It was the whole army, it was like the, the security. And the great thing about it was that it was in Brazil. And the nice thing about that is you really realize that rock and roll is the thing that holds the world together because music is the common language. Or the first time you break through to an audience and they all go nuts. That's better than screwing, you know, that's better. That's the best. Better than sex, better than anything in the world you could ever do. It's, it's like this. I love it. It's great. It's Make... like beating off? Uh, it's worse than that. What do you think about kids that want to try to make it? Well, that's what I did. Why not? Go for it. If you think you got it. Shove it out, run it up the flagpole and see who salutes it. The only people that are ever going to tell you you can't accomplish something are the ones who fail. I'm not here to tell you you can't do something because I did it. You can do it. I wanted it so bad. You know, that's one thing. Looking back, I, I know that, uh, that if you want something that bad um, and you think positive about it and to the point where you become it, therefore you are it. You got to believe that you're going to make it and if you don't, at least you gave 100% trying to make it. Anybody that sits on top of his palace after you've worked, you know, all your life to get it and says, you know, it's lonely at the top, it's just miserable, it's just, they're full of it, it's the best. But at the same time, we're not such thin people that, you know, I mean, we dry up and blow away if, you know, start injecting drugs because, you know, <laughs> we didn't get a hit single or something. I'd really be happy. I would really be broke and happy and rich and sad. What do you have to say to kids who want to make it as a rock star? Don't. What I want to be when I grow up, um, I would say, I would say happy. Did you ever think I'd get lonely? Did you ever think that I needed love? Did you ever think, stop thinking you're the only one I'm thinking of? You'll never know how hard I tried to find my space and satisfy you too. Things will be better when I'm dead and gone. Did you ever feel that way about your parents? I've had a pretty good relationship with my folks. I don't know. Are they proud a lot of, of people have a bad relationship with their parents. That's why they end up being disappointed with life. 
You know, and they take I, it out on themselves. A lot of parents are real dickheads, though. You know, they treat their kids real miserably. You know, and, and that's why we grow up like this. I'm in this business for the reason that Megadeth is in this business, and that's because of attitude, integrity, and music. Do you want to uh, live a lifestyle of a, of a rock star? Nah, that's megalomania to me. I don't want to get used to something that'll run out. I'd rather stay myself all the way and not ever get used to, you know, having a huge lifestyle so that in case anything ever happens, like I lose an arm or something, that, you know, I have to get used to being a bum again. We don't want to sit here and talk about all kinds of perverted sexual games we do on tour. We don't sit here and talk about drugs. We don't talk about a lot of the same old rehash stuff that bands keep doing over and over again in this business. Yeah, I want to stay at a street level because then I don't have any, you know, pretentious values in life and I don't start writing music just for the dollar sign. <laughs> On the road so much that you have to be, keep your wits about you. This music is technical music. It is harder to play than most of the average rock bands out there. And I think that we, you need to keep your chops in shape and you need to keep your health in shape. I'm not going to cheat the audience that way. I don't get high when I'm practicing at home alone, so why should I do it when I go up on stage? I mean, as far as I'm concerned, a band should go up on stage and play for themselves, not having to put makeup on and stuff like that. I mean, it's like a wall of marshals and your band playing. That's, that's a show for you. into a lot of different metal monikers. Well, I can't really... Megadeth, that's the best way to explain us because, you know, we don't really like to be labeled anything. I think categorization is a sin because it cuts you off. It doesn't let you go any farther. You can't expand any farther. You know, like some of the satanic bands, you know, they can't write anything about politics or love or anything like that or no love or whatever, you know, because they're dealing strictly with Satan. So, Dave, how come you write about death so much? Not really death, it's, it's more about awareness, you know? I mean, because without death, life would be meaningless, don't you think? I mean, life, death, sex, it's pretty happening to me, you know? Yeah. What else is there? Beer, maybe. Beer. <laughs> <laughs>
And when it starts going in your head and you start thinking that you're a god, it's stupid because in my book, there's always somebody better. So like David Lee Ross said here today and going later today. You guys get signed yet? It's getting close, very close. Everybody in rock and roll, heavy rock, is supposed to be stupid. And we're not stupid. Rock and roll should corrupt kids enough to think. There's nothing wrong with thinking. They will not stop rock and roll. This is the way it is. <laughs> hey, to be a rock and roll star is the greatest thing in the world. Popes don't get laid, and I do. And just be real careful. Wear rubber and don't do drugs. What can I say? <laughs> just remember one thing. You meet a lot of people on the way up. Don't fuck them, because you meet them on the way down as well. I love you. Telephone is ringing. You got me on the run. I'm driving in my car.